Hello all, welcome to San Compounding. This is Sandeep Anand. We saw in an earlier video what financial freedom means and uh, what is the benefits of achieving financial freedom. In today's video here I have created a blueprint, a eight step blueprint to achieve financial freedom early in life. Uh, rather than planning for retirement, it's important to plan for financial freedom. And it's very easy to talk about that but it's practically quite a long time-consuming process and so I have created a blueprint which is easy for every investor to follow and achieve financial freedom. So this, uh, these are eight steps and uh, each of the step has specific uh, action required from uh, all of us as a as an investor uh, to achieve financial freedom. Now financial freedom as we had discussed delved into earlier sessions like you know it just means that uh, the ability to call it quit of your current job where we need to work uh, really for the money um, and to pay the bills and uh, which might not be what we like to do and uh, whereas financial freedom helps us to get to a stage where money is no longer what we work for but we work for a passion and we work we really do the work than a job and that work has some significance in our life it could be creative it could be um, you know uh, constructive any any form of work that we really wanted to do but we are unable to do it as a daily routine because of uh, the jobs that we need to work on since we didn't have enough money and to get to that stage when uh, you know getting up to do what you love every day morning that that precisely uh, requires that a minimum amount in the account which which continues to grow all right so that is uh, that that minimum amount how to achieve that and uh, the obvious uh, step is to start early but let's go step by step so step one uh, is to decide to achieve financial freedom than just looking for retirement later on in life most of us as a common uh, as a, has this common trait of following the herd a herd mentality as uh, many of these behavioral economics colleagues call us as you know we we tend to just follow the norm when we join a job when we enter into a workspace uh, whether it is 20s or 30s when we start the work we are given an, a 401k account we are given a set of instructions to follow in for the retirement planning and we just blindly follow that we don't even tend to stop and think what these means for our uh, financial future we are only focused on the job so much that we tend to forget about the other aspects of life like fin achieving financial freedom or even creating wealth for that matter most often we are just uh, you know simply following the 401k account okay i got this now i put money month on month somebody does it something and nobody even knows where this money is getting invested into how much fees you're paying and that most often you know that's not the right way that is a surest way uh, to disaster in the financial uh, arena of your life so it's very important to pause and take a thought process like how much is required why are we doing the job is to fetch that money to accumulate the money mostly and uh, we get in return for doing the job and that money should be reaching some stage where we call it at uh, you know enough and that's called people call it as retirement some people call it as uh, pre-retirement uh, quitting whatever that is but the important point here is to pause take a thought process as in how much we need to say that you know I, I don't I no longer require to work for the money and that amount is your target that we need to decide to achieve not what the herd follows and put the money generally and you know people call it retirement at 60 55 65 whatever that age is and in spite of that people don't realize that they continue to work even 70s 80s because of the inflationary and other uh, price catch up so let's target clearly we need financial freedom early that is like 35 or 40 or 45 or even 50 is the age to achieve financial freedom that's very early in life that is a great advantage i'm not saying 60 is bad 70 is bad but 40s or 50s getting that financial freedom is a great advantage to do what we love so let's decide as a first step decide i want to achieve financial freedom and not plan for retirement like following the herd uh, in the community now coming to step two, um, we need to identify uh, the investment asset classes that we can achieve financial freedom through. And the first asset class I would say and the most 
possible asset class i would say is equities equities investments is nothing but investing in stock market in stocks of companies which are great businesses um, one can identify stocks in do diy mode which is do it yourself mode which needs a lot of learning a business analysis skill experience in the markets temperament and a lot of luck to play out this is a very long gestation process if you're trying to do it yourself because it has a lot of learning that pre text the whole investment process it requires uh, as a uh, you know pre mandate that we know this uh, when we develop this whole experience of identifying stocks learning about the businesses finding the future prospective returns that these stocks can get and how and understand the power of compounding that that requires a lot of experience and these experience can be many times va- invaluable because you know we often learn uh, in stock markets through experience of losing money and precisely to reduce that uh, you know lo- lo- amount that ca- that is usually lost in trading stocks or buying uh, low quality businesses generally another good idea is to invest through 401k process or through low cost uh, index funds or robo advisories uh, or even well managed mutual funds uh, with a broker anybody can open an individual retirement account or a brokerage account um uh, different types of brokerage accounts exist one such as um, uh, called as individual retirement account or ira and there are many providers uh, like merrill lynch ira td ameritrade um, etc uh, ira accounts are also provided by low cost robo advisories like wealthfront accounts and stash i have uh, dealt in to these uh, fintech firms the new age fintech who is focused on investing in a different video session and um, so the ira accounts provides many investment choices than just 401k accounts but primarily looks into investing in exchange traded funds and indexes now uh, that is uh, the step 2 which is to open a brokerage account uh, that that is a medium or channel through which one can buy stocks buy mutual funds buy index funds buy etfs whatever that asset classes but end of the day you all these channels are just conduits to buying stocks step 3 is to next set of steps are uh, for people who can invest themselves so the second step ends where it is robot advisory led automatic autopilot led uh, investing step 3 onwards i'm going to show how a common man can start investing themselves in stocks open an investing brokerage account uh, unfortunately it's called trading account in most places although it is a long term investing process you don't trade in and out brokerage accounts are available and can be opened online which is easy and provides investors with easy path to buying stocks funds and a variety of other investments there are many stock brokers providing platforms for investors to buy and sell stocks fidelity being one uh, robin hood which is a low commission uh, zero commission uh, based app like app based um, uh, brokerage account then there are e trade td ameritrade and many other in the market once you have the account ready step 4 you can invest in equities through mutual funds exchange traded funds or directly buying stocks through brokerage accounts mutual fund is nothing but it's a, it itself is a portfolio of many stocks managed by fund houses assigned fund manager whereas index fund represents the leading indices like um, s&p nasdaq or emerging market funds like based out of brazil china india Investing in index or ETFs are low cost since there are no management fee additional brokerages but mutual funds and hedge funds charge management fee for managing the investments let me pause uh, here a minute and ask you an interesting question have you ever imagined or wondered how much is enough to call it a quit or quit your job which is not your passion how much is uh, the magic number or the cut off number where we achieving which you can call yourself financially free and become liberated and uh, it could be 1 million dollars it could be 2 million dollars it could be 3 million depends it really depends on different people's ex- discretionary expenses lifestyle and many other factors that comes into picture whether you own a house whether you stay on rent multitude of factors uh, play into that picture and to decide and arrive at that number where you can call it a quit and start following your dream or passion full as a full time and uh, uh, so that number for me uh, is uh, 1.2 million dollars 
dollars uh, based on my expenses and my savings plan because I, this is assuming that you're going to continue uh, that staying invested with that amount and let that money compound and uh, after 20 30 years it's going to become a big number in addition if you're following your passion I'm certain that you're gonna get a lot of money in flow cash in flow doing and following your passion so it's very important to understand what that number is so pause and take a look at what your expenses are and what is that you need on a yearly basis to call yourself like you know this is the number I want and that's a magic cutoff number it could be different for different people and my approach to uh, achieving financial freedom is a very simple portfolio of 2025 stocks across geographies across businesses which I understand and staying invested for long periods of time like 20 30 years it's a time-consuming process it takes a couple of decades to achieve financial freedom if you follow the investing in equities route now let's get into the next set of steps and uh, see how to continue uh, with the blueprint uh, from step number five now let's see what the step five onwards states uh, step five is uh, the portfolio needs to be diversified across geographies across industries and business sectors and across uh, the market capitalization or size of the companies like small capitalization mark large market capitalization and they sh these stocks has to be bought at a decent valuations like a classic case would be to have a portfolio of 20 stocks that has few tech companies or cloud companies in us few retail consumer or financial companies in America markets like India um, China and few fintech firms like in Latin markets like Brazil and few uh, new age um, banks in Europe and so on this kind of portfolio should provide adequate risk coverage and higher returns than just ETFs or index funds which are much more diversified with uh, lesser returns with uh, so ETFs are low risk and low returns um, and uh, if you really identify great stocks and create a great portfolio of 20 stocks well diversified at decent valuations or cheap valuations those are also low risk but higher returns than just ETFs so the coverage for the risk comes from the ability of us to identify great businesses at very low or uh, decent valuations which are standard or steady compounders for long periods of time so that is also low risk the risk in uh, you know identifying and investing in stocks comes when we don't do enough analysis and just uh, trade in and trade out of the markets Getting into step six, the most important thing as Warren Buffett puts it, you should invest only in businesses that you understand and which can give you the conviction to hold through thick and thin of the business cycle. Only those stocks should exist in your portfolio so that you can understand how the business is performing from a long-term standpoint. One needs to track, track the stocks just to ensure things are fine, the business are doing good and no need to do any activity on the portfolio unless some businesses are re doing really bad or if one wants to buy when the valuations are attractive when the market falls you know the stock price falls down and the market becomes attractive or sell when the valuations goes crazy like the peak of the bull market the, again timing is very difficult to do that um, so it, it makes sense to buy and uh, you know for hold for a, a decent amount of time portfolio can be tracked for performance at least twice a year <laughs> Uh, many of us have the habit of tracking the portfolio daily uh, in fact minute by minute because of the latest apps that we have and the changes that we see it really is uh, lunacy to track that way uh, because businesses seldom gets affected uh, on a minute to minute or month to month or even quarters to quarter basis uh, businesses get disrupted even if they do so uh, over um, five years four years or even uh, you know more than five years sometimes it can be even a decade so uh, it really doesn't make sense to track the business um, if you think if the thought process that as Warren Buffett said that uh, we are buying a part ownership of a business uh, like McDonald's or any any uh, stocks that we buy we are buying a part ownership of the business so does it really make sense to just track daily how McDonald's stock price is doing day to day because stock prices are just a reflective of how the underlying earnings are and as long as the business fundamentals remain intact it doesn't really make sense to track the stock prices daily another problem is it becomes it makes us more impulsive it makes us take actions on the portfolio we keep uh, switching the stocks and uh, we keep moving to stuff which has done really well in the last few years so those are not good trades uh, for a great investor 
So step five is uh, create a portfolio of great businesses like 20, 25 stocks across geographies, across a uh, few business sectors that you understand and across uh, different sizes of companies, few large, few mid, few emerging small and even very small companies. And then um, this portfolio over a long period of time, if you keep it like, you know, uh, five, 10, 15 years, there might be some churns required. It's not that you can just buy and forget it. Few churns required over frequent time, like, you know, one in three years five years some business go down um, they stop growing after some time the management changes focus many things can happen so it is really important to track it just for the business performance not from the stock prices standpoint so that's step number six and um, now step number seven stay invested for six to eight years at least uh, before deciding whether the investment strategy turns out to be successful uh, the best uh, time uh, best holding period may be eight years 10 years 12 years somewhere in that range because the business cycles would tend to play out there could be a trough there could be a peak uh, there could be a stagnation and whatever so the period of eight to ten to twelve years would give a good uh, coverage over different cycles and businesses uh, that whether the storm of uh, downturns and even uh, that come up uh, very aggressively with new products new innovations they tend to play out well as investment picks for your portfolio once you're convinced that the strategy is working invest more and stay invested for another 10 years so uh, this is because the power of compounding tend to work over long periods of time like 20 years and that's how the money is made so um, it's come it's important to consistently invest every month as we get the salary or any cash flow from our own jobs or businesses this can be equally uh, distributed the investments can be made equally uh, distributing it to the stocks in the portfolio especially more to the ones which has fallen at that time uh, when you are in buying or when you have the money step eight Compounding will kick in its effect in this long-term portfolio to reap good returns for the portfolio investment. If a pot portfolio compounds at 20% CAGR, CAGR means compounded annual growth rate. So it is not year on year, um, every year the stock uh, is going to give you 20%. If you have a portfolio of 20-25 stocks, they tend to compound at 20% or 25% at the overall portfolio level. And um, in a year, uh, so if you stay invested for 10 years uh, and you are saying that you got a 20% CAGR, it means that not every year it's going to give 20%. It just means that compounded annual growth rate is 20%, which means in year one it might be 30, year two it might be 5, year three might be 40, year four might be 20. It's like it, it is very sporadic and stock market returns are non-linear in nature so that's something we have to understand so that is why it tests the patience you know there could be even three four five years when a business does not return anything and all the returns becomes um, you know uh, tail ended uh, towards the last five years where it will give uh, all the 20 percent CAGR so it cannot be really predicted when the stock would return uh, based on the even if the business is kicking well doing well stock might not reflect that sometimes I mean there could be many reasons why the valuations might be depressed so um, one uh, doesn't need to uh, wait for um, you know 25 years to achieve the financial freedom or goal it can happen earlier enough like 20 years itself since there will be continuous infuse of um, savings a person is doing on a monthly basis and the salary and the cash flow increases uh, over these years and more money gets infused so there's a very important point here if you start with um, say <clears throat> a ten thousand dollars and uh, if and if the if the portfolio compounds a 20 percent CAGR uh, it can go up to 100 times which means it would return 1 million dollars uh, in 25 years the important factor here is the ten thousand dollars does not stay as initial capital after that every month we are going to add our uh, savings into the investment this portfolio and um, so it could reduce from 25 years one need not wait for 25 years to reach 1 million it could even happen much earlier like 15 20 years because you're pumping in more money as you earn and save and um, so that is an important factor to note here so the consistent cash flow needs to be allocated to stocks and let that compound and uh, this is magical because you're starting with a, uh, a princely amount of ten thousand dollars and uh, consistently increasing it uh, over periods of time to reach even million or a couple of million dollars in 20 years which means that if you're starting like at age of 20 25 by 45 or 50 you would reach the uh, financial freedom finally do what you love and live every day doing that 
if we want to follow our passion and dreams the surest way is to achieve financial freedom because financial freedom is the ultimate liberation from stressful uh, jobs that we don't like and it is the surest en route to happiness hope you found this whole set of blueprint and steps to achieve financial freedom beneficial thanks for joining me